My name is Sarah Stock and I'm the wildlife ecologist for Yosemite National Park. And my job is overseeing the research of a lot of the bird and mammal projects in the park. And that includes peregrine falcons. Peregrine falcons are one of the most majestic and powerful birds in the world. And they are so quintessential to the cliffs of Yosemite National Park. They're also known to be the fastest animal in the world with speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour. So the peregrine uses its speed to hunt and the way that it does that is pretty unique. It, in its stoop of you know, 200 miles per hour, it flies down on its prey and knocks its prey out of the air with its brute force and then we'll swoop down and capture its prey. With speed that really has to be seen to be believed. I mean, it's faster than you've ever flown in a commercial airliner during takeoff or landing. It's faster than a Ferrari Formula One race car on a racetrack. Uh, it's just phenomenal how unbelievably fast they are when they're in that perfect uh, tuck or stoop, as biologists call it in the dive. and their eyesight is so incredible. Uh, they will spot and identify different species of birds from more than a mile away. In this case, vertically, a mile above the meadows of Yosemite Valley. And when they spot their target, they fold their wings back and they're just this perfectly streamlined shape. They are the most perfectly designed creature on Earth, if you will, in terms of their aerodynamics. In the 1940s, peregrines undertook this precipitous decline, and that happened all across the country um, with the advent of DDT. Over a billion pounds of DDT was put into the environment in the U.S. To protect food crops, and it got up into the food chain, and falcons were at the top of the food chain dramatically affecting them and preventing their eggs from being as strong as they needed to be so that they would crack when the female was incubating. So by the 1970s, peregrines were pretty much gone from the eastern U.S. and barely hanging on in the west. We did not have any nesting peregrines in the park for over 30 years. And in 1972, the U.S. banned DDT. In 1973, the peregrines were listed as endangered, you know, as part of the, the new Endangered Species Act at the time. And then in 1978, climbers were scaling El Capitan and they discovered an active peregrine nest. And this was really what spurred a lot of the recovery efforts in the park. So biologists from the Santa Cruz Predatory Bird Research Group and from the National Park Service and climbers all teamed up in the 80s and the 90s to work on restoring the peregrine falcon. A lot of these recovery efforts had to do with climbers climbing into these nest ledges and removing the DDT contaminated eggs and then replacing those eggs with dummy eggs. And then took them down to biologists that then took them over to Santa Cruz where they were incubated, hatched, and then the chicks were brought back up to the wall and swapped out the real uh, uh, chicks with the dummy eggs. And reportedly within you know, minutes, they, the parents were coming back saying, well, that was fast. We better get some food. <laughs> and they were rapidly bringing food into these chicks. And that was the first successful nest augmentation in Yosemite and the beginning of that wonderful ray of hope and bringing them back and their path to recovery. Now, here we are and they're, they're flourishing. In 1995, there were only five pairs that were documented in the park. And now we have over 13 pairs. Today in Yosemite, we monitor the peregrines. We have a peregrine surveyor who observes the peregrines on a daily basis. 
And as he's observing the birds, he's thinking about, is this just an individual? Is this individual paired up? Is this pair nesting? If they're nesting, are they nesting in a location where they might be vulnerable to the disturbance of climbers? And if so, what can we do to protect them from that disturbance? Are there certain climbing routes that we should close to make sure that we're protecting the peregrine? We're gonna lift those closures as soon as we can, as soon as the birds are fledged and no longer need that specific site protection. The peregrine story is arguably a grand success story. And I think we really need this positive story because it, it motivates us to know that success stories are possible. With the banning of DDT, we don't have this poison in the environment anymore. And that's really a testimony to how humans can right a wrong and bring an animal back that is so important to an ecosystem like Yosemite.